time restricted eating. Let's get into that a little bit. Yeah, this is this is kind of a fascinating area of research and science. It came from animal science where they were able to show that the strength of kind of day night rhythms or what we call circadian rhythms in animals was really influenced by when the animals were fed as much as like light dark cycles. Now, why does that matter? Having a really strong daily and nightly rhythm is great for your health. All your hormones, all your body repair processes, your energy, your cognition, your alertness, all those things have a beautiful 24-hour rhythm. And the stronger that rhythm is, the better your body does at immune function, body repair, cognition, deeper sleep, all kinds of benefits. And so in animals and humans now, there have been dozens of experimental or clinical trials where they can show that carefully timing when eating happens has tons of great health benefits for some of these same processes, immune function, cardiovascular function, metabolic function, but intriguingly also how sleep goes and how circadian rhythms look. So the idea is that when you eat may be as important as what you eat. And there's two elements about when you eat. One is making it super predictable so that your hormones and your hunger cycles and your appetite know have this kind of predictability, right? So eating consistently at the same time each morning, ending at the same time each evening is really good for your health. And then the other part about it is giving your body a break from being always digesting food. (laughs) So if you eat late at night, you digest that food for hours into your sleep, and that has some, some problems with interfering with hormones and other things that should be happening with your sleep. So what you want to do is don't eat too late at night, and then also don't eat super early in the morning. Let your body wake up, go through what it needs to do with cortisol increases and other hormone changes, and then you start your eating. And so at the, what all that means is you, you restrict your eating to about a 10 hour period, say, you know, 10 in the morning till 8 PM. We do all kinds of logging to figure out what's good for a person's personal sleep schedule, work schedule, social schedule, sports schedule, and we titrate it. But the basic idea is, Try and choose a 10-hour window and eat during that time each day. Am I understanding you right? I had always thought the time-restricted eating approaches were just about kind of truncating the period in which you're eating. But I got the impression when you were describing that, that the bookends of those times are important. The time at which you have your first meal of the day and the end meal and consistency in that pattern. Is that the way you read the evidence? Yeah, it's really... It's not just about shortening it. Shortening is is nice because now I can go to sleep and my body's done digesting. But predictability is a huge part and and really paying attention to that exactly what you said, the bookends. When do you start eating? When do you stop eating? And I'm assuming you were talking about sort of evidence or the use of time-restricted approaches in general populations of people who aren't living with mood disorders or bipolar disorder specifically. We know that people with bipolar disorder can be a bit wonky in their circadian rhythms or their body rhythms. So let's think about time-restricted eating approaches in bipolar disorder specifically now if we can. Sure. So in fact, one of the things that we often see for people with bipolar disorder is that they don't have strong circadian rhythms. Their clocks and even their clock genes may be a little bit disrupted. So What does that look like? Being a little too awake and go, go, go at night was certainly one of the early things that happens during mania. But think about depression too and not feeling energetic during the day. You know, kind of I'm sluggish all day and then darn it, I can't get to sleep at night. You can think about that as a problem of not seeing the kind of beautiful day-night rhythm that you'd want to see. So One of the hopes is that if we could give the body stronger signals to support that clock, that might help with that sense of like, boy, I'm tired all day and I can't sleep at night. 